you don't seem to understand. The galaxy isn't yours to conquer. How does it work when a player becomes the crisis, and how can we min-max our galactic genocide? Let's dive in and find out. In order to become the crisis, you will first have to take the Become the Crisis Ascension perk. To be able to take this perk, you must first have unlocked and taken two other Ascension perks. Therefore, the earliest you can take it is your third Ascension perk after you've completed three traditions. There are a couple of other requirements. You cannot be a xenophile or pacifist of any kind. You cannot be a rogue servitor or a subject of another power. You must not be the Galactic Sovereign or Galactic Galactic custodian, that means you cannot be in charge of the galactic community, you have to be something of an outsider. As long as you fulfilled all of those requirements, you can take this perk. That means actually you can take this perk pretty early if you're playing something of a unity rush. Once you take this perk, the universe will tremble. You get access to the different levels of menace. You'll start off with a total menace of zero and be on level one. As you increase the level of your crisis, as you accumulate more menace, you will get better and better perks that will aid you in your task of being the crisis. At level one, you unlock your menace objectives. I'll go through those in a moment. You get the Undertaker, which will increase your pop purge speed by 500%, making purging in your empire a highly efficient process. And against AI empires, you will get an increased subjugation acceptance. In order to level up your crisis, you will have to accumulate menace. Now, this can be done by completing menace objectives. And there are a vast array of menace objectives available to you from destroying empires outright to purging or assimilating individual pops. You will be getting menace from attacking and destroying enemy ships and star bases. As you can see, while this battle goes on, we're getting lots and lots of extra menace because you're going to probably be fighting in lots of different wars as the crisis. Destroying enemy ships and star bases will likely contribute a considerable number of points. Attacking and conquering a planet is another great way to get menace because mostly planets do contain pops of another empire and you can set the species rights of those pops to be purged or if you're lucky assimilated and rack up extra menace that way. As the crisis, you'll also get access to two special war goals. Wipe them out, existential expulsion, and bring them into the fold, imposed inclusion. The first one, wipe them out, will basically mean as you fight the enemy, you will behave very much like an endgame crisis, and instead of capturing enemy star bases, you will straight up destroy them. Bring them into the fold is a war goal to force the other empire to become your vassal. When you finally wipe out another empire and conquer their last planet, you'll get a bonus bit of menace for destroying that empire. And if you're enjoying this video, please menacingly use that like button. Depending on the number of starting empires in your galaxy, you will see that you get a different amount of menace for each of these objectives. As you can see, this is a slightly different tab where I had a slightly different number of starting empires and the menace rewards are different. So in a larger galaxy with more empires, you will have to complete more of these menace objectives in order to accumulate enough menace. To unlock the second level of the crisis, you'll need to accumulate a thousand menace. For level three, it's 2000 and for level four, it's 5000. The final level is a total of 10,000 menace. You will also have to complete a series of special projects to go up to each level. As you can see here, I've accumulated a thousand menace, but I haven't completed the first scientific project. To do that, go to the situation log, expand the become the crisis, and select the special projects. Each special project requires more and more research. The first requires 3000 society research. And as you can see, when I complete that and have the appropriate amount of menace saved up, I get access to level two. Level two is where we start getting some actual useful bonuses as level one, really the pop per speed was just to increase the rate at which we could accumulate menace. Menacing Corvette unlocks a special ship type. Base Breaker gives us an additional plus 30% damage versus star bases and Relentless Aggression gives a massive minus 75% war exhaustion 
exhaustion game. When you combine this with other sources, it basically means you will never have to forcibly make peace with another empire you're at war with, as you will never really accumulate any war exhaustion. The second project requires 6,000 physics research, and when we complete that, we will be issued with, of course, the third special project, along with the level three bonuses. Now we get the menacing destroyer, which I believe is basically the best of the three menacing ship types. Easily replaced, a plus 50% ship build speed. Very nice if you're losing many ships and fighting a lot of wars, which you should be, and need to replace your ships. Death from above will unlock the Armageddon bombardment stance if you don't already have it and give you a nice plus 20% orbital bombardment damage. And misconfigured thrusters will boost the evasion and disengagement chance of your corvettes, putting them on par with something like a destroyer for base disengagement chance. The third special project needs 12,000 society research. And when we unlock this, the fourth level of the crisis, we will be at the final point. These are the most we can get in terms of bonuses before we get to the final stage of being the crisis. The final menacing ship type, menacing cruisers is unlocked. It's important to know that each of the menacing class ships you unlock as you become the crisis will each cost minerals rather than alloys and no matter which components you put on this ship you will never change the price of the ship. They also have different slots available to the ships compared to your regular corvettes, destroyers and cruisers we get a whopping 50% ship's weapon damage increased. That is on par with the Ascension perk Defender of the Galaxy, which gives plus 50% damage to endgame crisis factions. However, that's going to work on our ships against everything we have to fight. Ironically, this means as a crisis empire, you are in some ways the best empire equipped to fight the endgame crisis. Your menacing destroyers will also get an additional plus 30% tracking, meaning they're going to have absolutely no issues with hitting corvettes with their L-slot weapons. But what do you think about becoming the Crisis? Let me know down in the comments below. Once you're at level four and you have accumulated enough menace to unlock level five, I would recommend you wait and assess the situation before completing the fourth Become the Crisis special project. This fourth special project, Tearing the Fabric, will cost 20,000 engineering research, you must not be the subject of another empire in order to get to this point. And when you do unlock it, you'll get some fantastic bonuses, but you will also automatically go to war with the entire galactic community as you will be declared a crisis. That is an integral mechanic, which is part of the game and you can't really get around that. For that reason, I would strongly, strongly recommend you build some habitats in your home system and turn them into fortress habitats whilst making sure to build lots of armies and maintaining a healthy garrison. That's because when you unlock the fifth level, you will get access to the etherophasic engine. This engine is the vehicle by which your civilization are going to breach into the shroud and ascend. We will ascend to become creatures of consciousness alone. And by ascending, you'll win the game. However, you have to be careful. If you lose your home system, that is the system with the etherophasic engine, you'll be stuck. You will no longer be able to complete the crisis until you regain that system and rebuild the ruined engine. Along with an etherophasic engine, you'll also get two star eaters. These are the most destructive weapons at the disposal of any empire in Stellaris. These Borg cubes can be used to destroy other stars and by doing so you will gain dark matter. And something of a hidden bonus that's not mentioned anywhere, when you actually advance to level 5 and you unlock these star eaters, you will also get access to all of the technologies required to build them. That's right, you'll get jump drives, dark matter reactors, level 5 shields and armor, as well as shield capacitors, regenerative hull tissues, level 5 lasers, level 3 advanced strike craft, all of these fantastic technologies you will get automatically and you will not need to research them. That is a fantastic and powerful advantage of becoming the crisis if you manage to do it early enough. Destroying a star will turn that star into a black hole and additionally crack every single planet in that system, wiping out all intelligent life. 
On top of that, all fleets, including our own, will go missing in action in the system. All megastructures and stations, well, they'll be gone too. The only thing that will be able to remain is the Star Eater. And for this, you'll gain some dark matter. The reason you'll want this dark matter is that you need it in order to upgrade the Aetherophasic engine. The Aetherophasic engine is a mega structure that grants you naval capacity as well as some nice basic resources. And of course, modifiers that affect mega structure build speed, such as master builders, will also affect the build speed of the Aetherophasic engine. So if you want to become the crisis and complete the crisis as fast as possible, it's a great idea to take both architectural renaissance ambition and the master builder's ascension perk. That way it's going to take half the time to upgrade this aetherophasic engine. The other two perks you get for level 5 are much less impressive. Harsh Priorities gives you plus 30% menacing cruiser hull points and Paid in Ambition reduces your ship upkeep by 30% which is definitely nice though nowhere near as powerful as the game winning aetherophasic engine or the Star Eaters. And once you've completed level 5, you don't really need to come back to this tab ever again. After completing the first level of the Aetherophasic engine, you'll notice that our base resource production and naval capacity from this megastructure increase, and the cost of getting to the next stage will go up as well. The cost of going up at each stage will go up by an additional 10,000 each time. And to completely win the game and complete every stage of the Aetherophasic engine, you'll have to upgrade it a total of four times for a total of 140,000 Dark Matter. But once you do, you can detonate the galaxy and ascend into Godhood. Every star which hasn't already been destroyed and turned into a black hole will be destroyed and turned into a black hole. Overall, this massive set of bonuses, along with a ship type which never changes its cost no matter which modules you put on it, and costs minerals instead of alloys, that is very cool and very important, make the Become the Crisis Ascension perk the most powerful Ascension perk in Stellaris. I've talked about the menacing ships in this video, but I haven't mentioned how you should best equip them to fight as the Crisis. If you'd like to know more about designing menacing ship types, click the video on screen now.